Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who checked out the last episode. If you're one of those people, I hope you enjoyed the conversation and thanks so much for coming back. But for everyone out there who's new to the show, welcome. Feel free to make yourselves at home. And as always, there's beer, soda, water, coffee in the fridge. Cheers to everyone out there on the internet. The opposite end of things. So along with being artistic and creative and having this energy of positivity flowing around and you're doing all this great stuff, right? <laughs> comes the the awkward business stuff with all of this, right? Like maybe, you know, like weird money things and th you know, stuff happens, right? How has navigating that been for you, someone who is an extroverted person, do you have an easy time being like, yo, give me my money or whatever it is you have no, to do? No, no. <laughs> Don't use this against me. <laughs> no, I totally get it. It's really hard. And I think that that's yeah. the thing that really stops a lot of great talent from getting to the next level is it kind of takes this weird, like I am totally not that cutthroat dog eat dog type person, right? But I've continuously seen people with that mentality, at least in my realm. Like I come from hip hop, heavy metal, hard rock. There's a lot more aggressive attitudes and that the nose uh in the scenes, right? And I'm I feel like sometimes I'm just too nice and I kind of like, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. But then, like, you know, a couple weeks later, I'm like, why did I do that? Oh, yeah. it's, it's it's really hard. It's a balance, you know. I I think for a really long time, actually. Sorry, there's a fly. It's okay. We are outside. We're outside, yeah. This is not a green screen. Right. Bugs are around. <laughs> um, I think for a long time, I actually felt like there was like a point where... So I was in a band earlier before this that was like more kind of hardcore. And like the one guy was from... He was the guitarist for War of Ages and like it was just way more like... Oh. More of a metal background. Okay. Okay. And he's... I mean, they were great. I loved him. He was awesome. He, we... Interesting. Together. Yeah. So okay. Totally different. And but I kind of felt like it has nothing to do with them or anything. But it was like I felt like I had to be a little bit tougher or like. But then I realized that that's that's just not me. And I, I really had to accept that, like, you know, I am an extrovert. I'm a bubbly person. And if that's not what people are expecting from me, then that's OK. Like I can still. Uh, enjoy the things that I enjoy. I can still listen to a bunch of emo music and be like extroverted. Like it's it's okay. Um, <laughs> like um, and also I think, especially the older I get, the more I've really had to work on reminding myself that this is a business, and I and I have to be. It's not it's not being mean to be direct with people and just be respectful of yourself and your business. Like um, you know, hey you know, I guess to me, like relationships always come first. So I would rather, especially with venues, like want the relationship to be good. So if something does get miscommunicated, uh, you know, I'd rather try to like work it out. But, um, in general, uh, I do feel like you kind of have to have that balance of, yeah, like I'm super nice, but also like, this is just, this is what my rate is. This is our standard. Um, this is my business standard kind of, and that helps not that helps make at least me not feel like I'm being mean because it's not mean. Sure. You and know? I think too, when it, once you reach a certain point in life and certain milestones, like you're somebody with a family. So mm -hmm. there are much higher things at stake than a concert or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So it I, the, have you found that like any of that sort of stuff maybe eases the burdens of like, oh, like if there's a problem at a show or a problem with this or that, it's like, well, it's not like there's something wrong with my child or something <laughs> like, you know, it's like this is much easier to deal with. A lot of times I've dealt with people that I mean, myself, I'm not I'm not innocent at all in terms of this, where I make the hugest deals out of like the smallest things, because like in some regards, like I don't have like responsibilities that are much higher than the show and my mm -hmm. art and things like that. Mm -hmm. How does it like relate with you? Like just having, you know, a life outside of music and how does that help you like keep your level head, yeah. level headedness in the midst of like what can sometimes be a very chaotic environment. Right. Yeah. I mean, I definitely look at it as a blessing. I, I never really, cons like, I honestly never thought that I would 
end up being married and having children, to be quite honest. Like that was not something I, not that I didn't want it. It just, when I thought, when I thought about my future, it wasn't like, that is my goal, you know? Um, but it really did quickly become part of my life and it, and it totally changes you. Um, I think in some ways my family feels like a grounding part for me. So like if something isn't going right with music or, um, you know, it's, it's, something's not being fulfilled. Uh, I know that my family is still like such a core of who I am, but also I, I think that it definitely doesn't change that drive inside of you though. Like just because I have my family, oh, yeah. I feel like I'm still just as like passionate about what I'm doing. Um, but it definitely like in terms of like problems, it definitely bothers me, but you're right. Like but if my kid was sick, like, I'd be like, well, this is way worse, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. so it puts things in perspective. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think like perspective is a thing that a lot of people that I've dealt with throughout the years, it seems like the grasp on that perspective is sometimes a little, a little lost, <laughs> which I get. And I empathize with it because I've been there. I mean, I guess in a lot of regards, I'm still there in a lot of ways. I'm mm -hmm. still always I don't know. I have a terrible tantrum and you know, ter terrible temper, I suppose. And uh, it's better than it used to be. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I, 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 I try to I need something to like keep myself grounded at times. And I don't know what it is other than just like yeah. me realizing that I'm being a total ding dong. <laughs> but you're more aware. You get more self-aware. Yeah, I try trying to be a lot more a lot more self-aware, you know, in terms of being self-aware as a musician now, you know, you're starting to do a lot of things with all of this other stuff going on. You mentioned that you don't feel as though um, it's like a distraction or like, you know, the family stuff is grounding. And I'm sure you have like a day job or like, I don't know what, <laughs> what you do, but you have a lot of things going it's crazy. on. Yeah, but it's like, crazy. you know, you're also now getting ready to like put out your first album of original music, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where do you feel like, how do you feel about with all of the chaos, like how you're going to go about like promoting and like, what are your expectations for this? Or are you like in a place maybe where like, no matter what happens, you're like, well, life is good. And I'm mm -hmm. just happy to be putting stuff out there. Right. You know, do you have like some big, plan for releasing this music yeah. and taking over the world I'm, what's abigail doing i mean i think my my little girl my little girl dreams big girl dreams uh, i would love to make music my career that will always be and in a way it kind of is right now like it's part of my jobs so it's like it really depends on how you look at like what kind of musical career you want to have um my idea of like success with all of that would be to be able to like tour with my own music, like have my own album being played and being able to play it for people live. And, um, but I think, I don't know, I have kind of like a weird piece about it too. Like I tend to really, I'm a very, very, a, um, I don't, hard worker just sounds so lame. Like I'm a really hard worker. Um, <laughs> but I am like, when I put my mind to something, sure. I, I can't just do it halfway. Like I, I am a, I'm going to go all the way with everything to the point where I, I burn myself out a lot because of it. But that's kind of what I've done with this album. Like I've done, you know, not saying I'm, I'm great at it, but I've done all the marketing for it. Like I've organized all the videos. I've organized all the pictures. I mean, I've had a great team of people, but what's making it kind of circulate is me and, and, the, and the work that I'm putting in. Um, Ideally, I would love to just reach a much larger audience. I would love to, yeah, be able to tour, to to just go as big as I can. Yeah. Um, but I'm also really content with it going to a point and just knowing that I put my best work out there and I was proud of myself for the product I created and that this is just the first step. Like, I can keep doing this. This isn't, like, the end all. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, I think that the work that you're doing, the, the music that I've heard, I think that it's very accessible. The production is bonkers. It's huge. Mm. It's so big. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't, I don't know, like, how, you know, involved you were in all of, like, you know, the mixing nitty gritty of all of this stuff. But I can imagine, like, if I was in your position, I go into a studio, I record the, I record the song, I hear some things, I make some suggestions, and then maybe... 
a week or two later, I get a mix back. Mm -hmm. The first time I heard that mix, I'd be like, what the flapjacks I know. is this? It's I know. huge. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you, like hearing these songs for the first time, like really oh. like all put together? Yeah, it was it was definitely an adjustment. It was weird. Because they're because... very big sounding. Yeah, the first, I mean, the <laughs> debut single definitely, yeah. like I remember that song was like really easy to write. And I just, you know, wrote it on my guitar. Like I knew exactly what I wanted it to be like. But then once I brought it in, um, to my producers and they're doing all the mixing and mastering. They're showing me all these other things and we're adding all these layers and all like there were, I don't even remember the number. There were so many tracks like on that track. I believe it. <laughs> Tons of layers. But it was amazing yeah. how I remember at first being like, whoa guys, like I didn't want all that. Like I, <laughs> what, what do you mean? We, that's a lot, you know, sure. but they're like, just trust, like, just, just give it a minute, give it a minute. So I really had to re like remind myself, like, give it a couple runs. Like I can't just listen to it for the first time and be like, yes or no. You really have to sit with it. And then once I kind of got on board with what that was going to be like, I was like, you know what, this is really fun. And there's so many possibilities. And also I, I just think we had really great communication, the team that I had, like I would come in with ideas. And even if I didn't know how to play them, I would kind of like give them examples or I would, uh, like hum them with my mouth or tell them like, I want this kind of instrument here and this kind of feel. And they would be able to do that. And then maybe they'd add something a little onto it. So it was a really great, it was, it's a great system that we have. Yeah. I, I think working with the right people is super important, which why I, why I think it took such a long time for me to really write something that I, I was proud of and 